There's a new grassroots movement that started to combat the Tea Party, what the governor and I were just talking about, and its name is one of those seven dirty words uh, that you can't say, on television at least, uh, or on the internet. I mean, progressives have tried to play nice, but now they're saying it is time to get mean. And will this have an impact on this year's midterms and beyond? Erica Payne is the founder of the Agenda Project, which has started this campaign and joins me from New York. And uh, I'm just going to refer to it as the FT campaign, if that's yes. okay. And I'm not referring to the Financial Times. Right. Okay. Um, I just obviously, uh, we just had this interview with Governor Patrick, and I thought one of the right. striking things that he said was that when we saw Scott Brown win in Massachusetts, uh, he, as he described it, Democrats reacted with this kind of chicken little, the sky is falling approach, yeah. and kind of forgot what they stood for. I mean, do you agree with that? Have Democrats been uh, allowing uh, themselves to be kind of, uh, what, I mean, scared by the, the right? I mean, what do you, how would you assess kind of the leadership in the Democratic Party? Well, I think there are a few different leaders in the Democratic Party, so I would isolate them out in a few different areas. Um, the one area that I'm deeply concerned about, which is part of the reason that I launched this campaign in the way that I did, is the financial reform um, this whole set of legislation that happened this year, and that was what started the Tea Party. And you've seen from some Democrats a lot of leadership on that issue, and you've seen from other Democrats a lot less leadership on that issue, and from some Democrats, you know, leadership of the opposition. You know, the Goldman Sachs spent $600 million, not Goldman Sachs and the rest of the financial sector spent $600 million on lobbyists in 18 months. And, um, and it's really time that people said, you know, enough already and pushed back. Well, I mean, when you think about, though, uh, even recently, uh, when we see kind of people, leaders of the party, the president, for example, right. taking a position on the, the, the mosque in New York and supporting it, uh, we've got Senator Ree coming out uh, saying that he opposes it. I mean, at right. what point does that start becoming just politics? I mean, what do Democrats stand for? What do you think they should stand for? Well, so if you go on the front page of my website, which is agendaproject.org, the first thing you'll see is a sentence that says, what if someone told you politicians are the least important part of politics? And I really want people to grab hold of that idea because at the end of the day, politicians are politicians and we should never expect them to be anything other than what they are. And it's, what is important though is that people actually go out there and push for the ideas that they believe in and build a movement that is bigger than politicians so that politicians of both parties are, you know, required to do the people's business, which is what they're in Washington to do. But, you know, your na the name of your group, you know, obviously is the FT Party. Yes. Um, isn't that what the Tea Party is doing? I mean, what you're, it sounds like what you're looking for is actually uh, what the Tea Party is doing. It's this grassroots movement. Right. No, that's 100% right. The reason that I actually launched this campaign, and my mother, incidentally, totally disagrees with, um, <laughs> totally yeah, disagrees with the word, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 um, I got it. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, and, even um, saying but, the F word's probably going to get me a phone call later today, right, but, you know. Right, exactly. It certainly got me a couple from my mom. But, um, but anyway, no, here's the thing. The Tea Party started, which people may not remember, but they started in reaction to the bank bailout. And early on in the Tea Party's um, you know, evolution. I was so thrilled with their activity because this was a place where financial regulation was actually a place where the left and the right, the intellectual left and the intellectual right, not the people inside the Beltway, but the people outside the Beltway had a tremendous amount of agreement. And I co-edited a report called Make Markets Be Markets about financial regulation. And so when I looked at the Tea Party, I thought, oh my gosh, at last, you know, a group of people who can really fundamentally push back on the bought and paid for politicians and what then happened as you saw you know the debate unfold they turned to health care and then they quickly turned to sloganeering they quickly turned to rhetoric and I saw them I've been working on financial regulation for 18 months very deeply they were nowhere to be found as a result we have a bill which is something you know but is certainly not as far as it needs to be and I thought it was really irresponsible of people who had started you know because of a specific issue issue to not really focus on that issue and so at the end of the day I just thought forget it you know like you're not going to do it any either well you know you, you know right but you're okay so but you're as your mom knows uh, you know <laughs> we uh, you didn't call the group you know the forget tea party movement right I mean, you chose this provocative name and obviously I know right. you read what Bill Crystal wrote in the weekly standard yes. uh, really taking some shots at you saying that this is what the left has uh, yep. de de generated to that we're just using profanity because they can't really come up with anything else uh, what's right. your response to that 
Well, I would, um, I guess I would say a couple of things. First of all, you know, like it or not, a lot of Americans use profanity in their daily life. I saw a study by a psychologist who said that people use on average or 30 or 40 curse words per day. I know my mother would not fall into that camp, but my father possibly would. Um, and Dick Cheney, actually, you know, one time he told Patrick Leahy to, you know, F off. And Dick Cheney said, you know, kind of tongue in cheek later, but he said it was one of his proudest days on the floor of the Senate or whatever it was. And so, you know, it's a it's a stress reliever. It's a provocative word. I, um, I talked to, when I was talking to my mom last night, I said, would you, are you happy with the substance of it? And she said, well, I do like the idea because, you know, the Tea Party, I think that they They've actually turned around. They're not as you know. They're not doing what they should have done. And I said, well, if I so if I'd launched it called you know the Forget You Tea People, would you like that? And she said, definitely. And I said, well, from a marketing point of view, though, don't you at least concede that the word I selected, you know, has a better chance of breaking through? And she did concede that. So. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I have to say, all right, you, you may be on to something there, even though your mom doesn't agree with it. And I must say that one of my proudest moments is that you and I both got through the show without, I think, us even to have to use the little beep. <laughs> so neither one of us said the F word. That's um, excellent. And but, we should keep it that way. <laughs> but I, I mean, I really appreciate you joining us and, oh, and sure. explaining this. Let, let me just ask one final question, though. I mean, when you, when you talk about the Tea Party, um, right. and you know, you're kind of in your face, deliberately, provocatively, trying to get more attention, uh, for your organization. I mean, do you think that the Tea Party is just a failure or are you glad to see these uh, kind of, I mean, you, it is getting people engaged in politics and involved right. in politics and it's outside the beltway. Uh, right. So, you know, why not coexist with this group instead of just saying like, go, you know, F yourself. Well, I mean, what's been really interesting and so positive and it, it you know, just made me feel good as an American and good as a human being was that as provocative as this campaign was, you know, we definitely got probably 2,000 hate emails, which I'm starting to respond to on my Facebook page. Um, but so people would send ugly emails in telling us, you know, any number of things that they would like to see us do. But then res we responded to those emails with, you know, I understand your point of view, but I'm concerned about this kind of thing. And what ended up happening was we've got people writing back in once we you know eliminate that sort of intense rage that comes at people we've had some really fantastic conversations and there are so many people out there who are so deeply concerned about the direction of their country and so deeply concerned that Washington on both sides of the political aisle has been taken over by big multinational corporations interests and the interests of these big banks and so this is right. you know I think there's a lot of agreement and so Hopefully, you know, we can find a way to constructively promote the ideas that we believe in.